Right, welcome everyone. Uh, good to be here for Soba uh, Sunday. This is a time that uh, we get together with different people, guests uh, from deep, different places, and we have a sober conversation, uh, stimulating conversations about different uh, topics and areas of life uh, that affect all of us. And we're grateful to many of you who have been uh, working with us this past 20 episodes. Uh, that's right, it's been 20 episodes. And we are grateful that many of you are kept with us. We have had good conversations, uh, very good feedback from most of you. So we want to invite you uh, to host a watch party uh, to invite someone to get people here uh, having conversations. I believe that our topic today, as it was last week, this is a continuation of it, uh, can save your marriage, your relationship, uh, can save you in the future if you're still young and you're not there yet. Uh, so this is a great conversation around the four faces of relationships and marriage. Uh, this is Simon Bevy uh, from Transform Nations. Uh, we're hosting you. And uh, Transform Nations is an organization that uh, deals with healthy families uh, and transforming communities. That's our vision. And we equip leaders in the family, in the marketplace, and in the community to be able to impact their area of influence uh, so that eventually we have national transformation. And so, we do different programs and you're going to be seeing those programs uh, talked about on our page as we continue. And those of you joining us in other pages, you're welcome as well. Uh, we do Man Enough, the XY journey. In fact, a new, uh, a, a new uh, team is starting this coming week, a new battalion, as we call them, for uh, the Man Enough uh, course for men. Uh, then we also do ESA, which is for the ladies, intentional moms which is also starting this week and we just started a very exciting over uh, uh, close to 300 boys who are going through boys to men mentoring program uh, from different nations so in case you have a boy who's 7 to 17 and you'd love for them to work with trained mentors uh, for the next um, uh, seven weeks uh, from any part of the world you're welcome to sign up with us so welcome everyone I'm glad to have uh, my partner not today. Um, they were very real last week. Uh, let me start from farthest. Uh, that is um, her son and John uh, joining us from Kigali, uh, Rwanda, uh, still in East Africa, though there's a bit of time difference. Uh, but we're glad to have you. Thank you for your contribution last week. Uh, say hi to us today and also say a bit about yourselves before uh, we get into the discussion. Thank you so much, Pastor Simon, for hosting us for a uh, second week in a row. I think it's indicative of the fact that we didn't uh, spoil your show last week. So <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> my name is Hassan Chibirango, and uh, this is my lovely wife of 12 years. Mm -hmm. uh, the Lord has blessed us with four children, 10-year-old, 8-year-old, and 6-year-old uh, twins. Mm -hmm. And uh, we uh, live and serve in Kigali. I am in the leadership development space, but I also serve in a local church called Christian Life Assembly, where you've been uh, ministered quite a number of times. And yeah, it's a joy for us to be here again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, John, do you want to say something? We hear your voice. You look happy today. Uh, hi again. Um, I'm glad to be back to, to tonight, and we are glad to be here. Uh, with you tonight, and uh, uh, I'm so happy that we are on a journey together as we make these marriages work, and we, we know that God is at the center. Let's make him the center, and everything will be working out well. Yes, thank, thank you. Thanks very much, Joan. When uh, guests are invited back, either they did a great job or they're gi being given <laughs> a chance to redeem themselves. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, but you did a great job. So we're glad to have the Moridis here. Uh, they are gurus in this area. They have written books and do programs. And so we're very glad that they are here. Uh, Moridis, uh, please, uh, you, could, you could say hi to us. Hi, hey, uh, we are Moridi and Carol Wenzhou. And uh, um, we're pastors. Uh, 
yeah, at Mavuna right. Church. Uh, but also we do a lot of uh, mentoring of couples and um, your parents of three children. Uh, and it's great to be back. I think it was uh, fun last week. And uh, thank you for a second chance to redeem ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> No, you did a great job. So last week, those who are, who are not with us, uh, and the Moredis are my pastors, so I feel safe here uh, with uh, this set of uh, guests. Um, so last week, we began to talk about the four phases of um, relationships, or specifically marriage. And uh, for those of you who are not married, this is a great leakage into what is uh, going to be happening uh, when you get there. Uh, those of you who are married, you're definitely seeing yourselves uh, in these uh, stages or phases, uh, and you know what to do. Uh, and just, be, uh, you know, doing a small recap, uh, maybe Pastor AM, you will do that for us. But we, we began by talking about the dream stage uh, and then the drama stage. Uh, and I have a question for you around the drama uh, of an experience I had this week. But if you could just give us a, 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 a summary of what, uh, those two stages and, and basically what happens. Well, uh, first of all, uh, it's just great to be back, like I said, and it's great to be with Hassan and John again. Uh, we enjoy these guys. Um, thanks, Pasi, for hosting us. And uh, for those who are watching, uh, if you missed last week, I really enc encourage you to go back and listen to, to that video. We went into depth. We talked about the stages of marriage. And we talked about the fact that we talked about the first two in detail. And what we said is every marriage goes through these stages. Uh, no, none of us is exempt. And... Um, we talked about the fact that the first one is called the dream stage, uh, where you meet someone, you uh, are attracted to them, uh, you easily overlook all differences because you want to be together with that person. And um, it's a very interesting phase. For some people, it lasts um, for a few years. Uh, for some people, it ends after their honeymoon night. On their honeymoon night, some people, I mean, it, 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 it lasts hours. <laughs> Uh, but what we say is everybody goes through that stage. That's the one thing that allows people to get together. Um, and God allowed it. Uh, uh, even in the Garden of Eden, uh, God put Adam to sleep uh, so that he could give him a wife. So there's a, a sense in which you need to fall asleep a little bit and dream uh, to find the person you're, you're going to, to be with. But then you soon wake up and what we call the drama phase is when you begin to realize that your dream is... Uh, and your expectations are a bit mismatched from the reality uh, because none of us really marry the real person. We marry the dream. Uh, you marry what you really wanted to marry. And then you realize your expectations and your, uh, your aspirations are very different from the person you married. And that's where the problem comes because now you find yourself trying to change the other person and trying to make them to match your dream. And the reality is that none of us like to be changed. Uh, it's true. Nobody likes to be pushed into being what they're not. And that's where a lot of fireworks and drama comes in marriage. Uh, but we also said it's a necessary phase uh, because that's when now the couple really start to know each other beyond the dream. Who is this person that I married? So that's in a nutshell what we talked about, but I'd really encourage uh, you to go back and just watch the, la the, 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 the last week's video. Uh, well, thank you. I know someone was telling me I'm such a good Christian. I'm not too sure I'll go through that. And uh, uh, I, I said, well, as long as you're human and you're in this broken world, then you're broken. And um, the stage is actually good for you. They're actually good for you. Um, and even with Jesus and his disciples, they went through the, uh, the stages of teamwork, you know, the times that they had yeah. their storming uh, sessions and uh, their sort of drama, uh, and they got back together. But it's, it's just a journey of life because we are human. Uh, but talking about drama and being able to deal with drama enough to move on to the next stage, which is what um, we are discussing shortly. Uh, I was talking to this couple this week. Um, they've been married for many years, uh, many years, um, a lot more than the Hassans. Um, and uh, finally, they have gotten to a place where it's not pretty. In fact, they are thinking whether they should separate and divorce. Uh, but uh, mainly it's because 
according to uh, both of them, that they feel that uh, there are issues that they have never really dealt with and they have grown so big uh, that now they're just too big to be handled. Uh, mm -hmm. They feel like we saw these things right from the beginning. Uh, we swept them under the carpet. We didn't deal with them. Uh, they came up at another point. For the sake of peace, we just brushed over them. We really didn't face them. Uh, and, and now they have grown too big. Uh, they're kicking us out of our home. What did you say to that? Okay. Um, the, the interesting thing, thank you so much, uh, Pastor, mm. Pastor Simon. Uh, the interesting thing about the drama phase is that mm. um, it's a test. It, it's mm -hmm. really a test. And I believe that uh, it could be a test in two ways. There could be more than mm. two, but um, these are the two that immediately come to mind. Mm. The mm -hmm. first test is, it is actually testing our ability to handle differences and conflict. Mm -hmm. And there are some people for whom it is just impossible. It's, it's very difficult. So like now, uh, for example, this one person who I was talking to, and by the way, the, the ability to handle conflict is really a reflection of your family of origin. So I was talking to someone who was really having a difficult time, you know, just um, uh, reconcile, just having conversations in their mm -hmm. family. And so I asked, so how was conflict handled in your spouse's uh, family of origin? And uh, what they told me is that they used to pick up pangas, you know, <laughs> machete. That is the way that they used to handle conflict. It was ugly, just downright ugly. Um, I think that the dad was violent uh, to the mom. Uh, the, the siblings um, grew up watching that. And so for them, conflict is crazy. They, they really mm. fight, literally fight. And so what happened for this person is that, um, mm. you know, in that kind of a situation, it's either fight or flight. And mm -hmm. so for them, they took the flight path. Mm -hmm. uh, for their siblings, you know, they are those ones who took the fight path. And so they continue, you know, to have conflicts in their marriages. Mm -hmm. But this one, I think uh, it was so, so traumatic for them that mm -hmm. they just took flight. And so when they come into this new marriage and, um, you know, they face this uh, conflict, they can't cope. They mm -hmm. really cannot cope. And for me at that point, I'm like, you know what? Yes, um, in, in psychology, we talk about trauma. Mm -hmm. I think it could have been that you just experienced so, so much trauma that in your mm -hmm. marriage, you cannot cope, especially when mm -hmm. there was violence uh, as mm -hmm. a way of, of dealing with conflict. So mm -hmm. that is the first thing that I, that I see when mm -hmm. it comes to drama as a test. How well can you handle uh, conflict uh, and, mm -hmm. and and especially coming from your family of origin. If your family mm. of origin man manage their conflicts well, then probably that's a skill that they gave you mm. and you're able to, uh, to bring that on to your new family. Mm. Uh, short of that happening to you, you may have to go for counseling. You may have to go for therapy mm. yourself mm. so that you can, um, so that you, you can, that trauma, it can be dealt with. And then you would be able to manage the conflict in your home. So that was that's the first test that is happening over okay. there. Okay. And then, and then the, the second test has to do with how do you deal with your partner's or your spouse's failures? Mm -hmm. And again, this is something that comes from a family of origin. How mm -hmm. did you treat weaknesses or failures mm -hmm. in the family? And how was that dealt with uh, among mm -hmm. families? Yeah. And you might find that for some people, when there was a, a somebody who had a weakness or a failure, mm -hmm. or somehow, you know how you talk about the weak link? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Even that whole term of a weak link in a family, mm -hmm. uh, it, it means, um, it, yeah, there are those people who tear, you know, you tear somebody down. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you tear, you, you belittle them, uh, you, know, or, you know, basically you don't treat them very kindly. Yeah. And so, uh, and so, when you come into a marriage and you notice a flaw in your spouse, my goodness, mm. you're just going mm. to bring back um, the way that you used to deal with it at home. You're going to yeah. bring mm. it to the marriage, mm. and you're mm. going to tear your spouse down. And it doesn't matter whether it's a man or a woman, but mm. when you look at a flaw, you will go for it, and you're going to tear. Mm. So I think those are the two things that I can think of at uh, top of okay. my mind. 
Okay. Uh, so I think we're talking about uh, you get out of a drama stage better uh, if you learn how to deal with conflict. And, and in recent literature, they're calling it uh, not just conflict resolution, but conflict transformation. Uh, looking at conflict as a way of changing both of you to become better and using it as a tool uh, of a better tomorrow. Uh, so uh, conflict uh, transformation and also being self-aware. I think that's what I'm hearing. You need to be self-aware. How has your family of origin uh, shaped the way you see conflict, uh, the way you handle it, the way you deal with it uh, so that you will not mess up this good marriage uh, because of that. So you need some skill uh, to handle this. Um, maybe for you, uh, Joy and uh, Hassan, I think uh, you've been fine Christian uh, man and woman uh, been in business and eventually uh, in church and still in business. Um, the Bible tells us that we need to talk to each other, um, tell each other the truth in love. Um, how have you experienced that? And what does that mean for Christians? Um, maybe John, we can start with you. Um, have you gone into a place where you have struggled to tell this man the truth? Uh, or have you said it without love? And what does, does it look like to say the truth in love during drama? Um, uh, surprisingly, we were talking about it just a few minutes ago when okay. I, I told him something and he's like, you know, just be a bit gentle and, you know, I, I want some, some softness. I'm like, you know, the truth hurts, but it's the truth. Uh, but in marriage, uh, there's a different way. Truthfully, um, even when you're out there, when it's, it's not marriage, when you're telling someone the truth, it does hurt. Now, imagine it coming from someone you love. It kind of really hurts them more. So, um, but you know, as you, you're in the drama stage, as you go on, you kind of learn when to communicate and how to communicate uh, whatever you want to communicate or a conflict that has come up. And uh, it's very, very important for us to really understand moments and uh, how those moments have to be handled. Uh, you, you can't find that someone is really stressed and you come out and tell them something they've done. It will kind of heighten the the pressure that is there and then argument will start from there. It's uh, understanding moments and then learning which words to speak. You know, however much you're trying to communicate something, you can find a way of communicate what, communicating whatever you want to communicate, but in a loving mm. way, in yeah. a more yeah. gentle way, mm -hmm. than, than a way that really hurts the other person. You know, you, mm. you're rubbing it in. You, you want them mm. to take it in, but in a rough way. So mm -hmm. it's very, very important to learn the techniques of how to communicate whatever you want to do. Yeah. Uh, excellent. So you're talking about timing, and I agree with timing. You know, there's a time early in our drama stage, I had to tell my wife, please, don't tell me negative stuff when I've just landed and we are driving from the airport and now you begin to bring out all the drama. You know, that doesn't do well with me. I just want to settle down for a day uh, or two. And then now we can talk about those emotive things because men don't do very well with um, highly charged emotive issues, uh, especially at the wrong time. Uh, you know, the timing is very important. So John, uh, big ups for that. Uh, and then you also say choice of words. And um, uh, there are times that men feel like uh, the words were not chosen well. So instead of responding, uh, they get into a quarrel. Or they don't really receive it well. Uh, Hassan, you, you talk to men, you lead men. What are some of the wrong things men do when handling conflict uh, that you would advise them? You know, when you're told the truth, even though, you know, some, some of our wives are still learning to be more gentle um, or to, 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 to think about the right timing. Uh, of course, it shouldn't be just before bed and, uh, we, you know, <laughs> a, a night that, uh, that has expectations, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, it will look like an excuse or uh, mm -hmm. running away from that reality from a man's perspective. But uh, what are some of the mistakes and what would you tell the men? Yeah, I think for me, the drama stage for a man, well, in my own case, when we were still deep in drama, every time Joan tried to communicate something to me, it came as an attack. Yeah. 
at least that is how I would process it, and that mm -hmm. is how I would receive it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it, it's interesting. Pastor Carol talked about how we carry a family baggage into the marriage and even how we deal with conflict. Mm. I do not back down. Well, the Lord has done a work in me. By then, I did not back down from a fight. So every time she would, even when she was correcting me uh, on something that was obviously my fault, mm -hmm. uh, I would see it as an attack. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so men have a tendency of putting up defenses, especially when you know that you're wrong. Um, mm -hmm. Rather than, uh, again, humbling yourself and, and finding a way of saying, okay, I will work on this. Mm -hmm. um, this we just don't want to go down uh, mm -hmm. like we've lost the fight. Yeah. Um, so I, I used to be that kind of person. So every time John would want to correct me, I would see as she's coming for a fight. Mm -hmm. I am the fight in the marriage. She's the flight. Mm -hmm. So I would just get what she has said, twist it and just use it to harm her um, and be emotionally and sometimes uh, verbally abusive towards her. Mm -hmm. But I can win. And I would feel good momentarily mm -hmm. that I won this battle. Um, but then I would lose the war, you know. Um, mm -hmm. So, 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 my encouragement to men is that um, number one is because we know we, we usually get very charged and we get mm -hmm. angry easily, and mm -hmm. some of us, depending on how uh, mm -hmm. you, how well you can handle your own anger, uh, mm -hmm. some men become physically abusive. So we need. For me, I think it's humility, really, and humility mm -hmm. comes with the. Uh, with time and with us constantly yielding ourselves to Christ. Yeah. yeah. And, and growth and acknowledgement, acknowledging mm. our own mm. weaknesses, the fact that, you know what? I think I have a problem with the way I deal mm. with conflict. Mm -hmm. And it's not helpful. If what my spouse has told me is the truth, mm -hmm. um, I need to find a way of dealing with the truth without, mm. uh, you know, escalating uh, the fight. Yeah. Uh, that's right. And I mean, I, I feel you because there are times I've also taken the truth uh, that my wife was telling me and I knew it was the truth and twisted it mm -hmm. and even showed her, uh, you know, what wrong she has done. And she would feel sorry about it. And then I would be unrepentant. <laughs> and then later, you know, God is just working on me. <laughs> and I'm feeling so guilty because I know she was speaking to me. Uh, but you know, I, I, I took the opportunity to show her the other side. And men seem to have that skill. I don't know where we learn it, but uh, men also run away from the conflict a lot uh, or just become, uh, you know, loud and all of this to try and protect themselves. Uh, so guys, I think let's, let's be man enough to face the truth and to listen to it and not to be unfair in, in the way that we fight, just to fight fair. Uh, past time, I think it's time to move on, but if you want to push, uh, put in anything there, you could. But next stage is about discovery. Uh, yes, Pastor Caro, you wanted to add something. Uh, you guys are not unmuted. You're, 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 okay. I had no idea uh -huh. that you guys are aware that uh -huh. what you have been told is true. I mean, I'm like, huh? Thanks. Oh, thanks. thanks for that. <laughs> Uh -huh. Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, so, all right, first time. So last time we spoke about, uh, and I know a lot of people were dismayed when we talked about the fact that uh, drama for most couples uh, will usually start to ease around year twelve of marriage. So uh -huh. I think uh, for Hassan and Joanne, you guys uh, smiled a big sigh of relief. But we had a lot of couples who are like, what? That's impossible. <laughs> That's too far. And I think it's what Pastor is saying. I mean, some people say, oh, us, us we are saved. We, that mm -hmm. would happen. We thought mm -hmm. that as well. You know, we, the, the interesting <laughs> thing is because we are trained this way, we assume because we've been trained and because we've been mentored and because we know it, uh, that for us, we'll, it will move through the stages much faster. But mm -hmm. the interesting thing is it, does, it didn't happen. It actually happened mm -hmm. almost exactly as predicted. And a big part of it is because that's how long it takes for you to really know a person, to start to know mm -hmm. a person. Uh, mm -hmm. If you really are working towards knowing your spouse, mm -hmm. uh, if you're really working through your, as you're saying, transform mm -hmm. transformative conflict, not, not uh, seeing the conflict as an enemy to run away from, but allowing God to use your spouse uh, mm -hmm. to shape you. 
it takes a long time for you to finally begin to get to the place where you realize. And, and I, you know, I think drama ends when you mm -hmm. give up trying to change your spouse. Yeah. And mm. let me just tell you, even when you know this, it's still going to take a long time because we mm. still have hope mm. that the spouse I married, I can turn them into my dream. And this mm. is both men and women. And so a lot of that conflict will come because you're thinking, okay, okay, fine, fine. I may not get everything I want, but this one I have to get. Uh, mm. This one I'm not willing to give up on. And as long as that is there, you're going to continue just hitting against a wall. And eventually what happens is you, for many couples, um, I think what, what launches you to the next phase is one of you gives up. Mm -hmm. One of you, not on the marriage, but gives up mm -hmm. trying to change the spouse. Mm -hmm. And at that point, the game ends because now, you know, as long as I'm, you're trying to change me and I'm trying to change you, we, can, we are playing this game that is very rewarding, mm -hmm. by the way. We, we mm -hmm. as Hassan says, you say something, I twist it. So what happens one day, somebody just gives up and says, you know what, I'm not playing that game anymore. I'm not mm -hmm. going to be able to change you. I've given up. The Lord did not give me the spouse I was praying for. He gave me something else. So let me just turn to the Lord at this point and just trust God. And that launches the marriage into a phase we call discovery. Mm -hmm. And discovery is when you stop trying to change the person into your dream and you mm -hmm. begin to actually discover the person that God gave you because mm -hmm. God gave you something very different from what you thought you were getting uh, mm -hmm. or what you wanted for yourself. Because remember, God is the one who made you. He knows exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. And part of our idolatry of ourselves is to think we are the ones who determine this or who know what we need. So mm -hmm. discovery is when you start to say, okay, God, I didn't get the, 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 the flower I wanted. So what did you give me? Who is this person? And mm -hmm. you actually start to explore uh, and discover the person. And mm -hmm. this is when you now uh, begin to actually become fascinated again uh, with the person to start to see the differences, mm -hmm. not as a threat, but as something interesting, you know, uh, because now you're no longer trying to change the person to be. So mm -hmm. let me give an example. Um, when we were dating and when we were in our early stages of marriage in the dream stage, I used to, um, I think I'm Pastor Simon, I always said, I'm, I'm the cow in the relationship between Pastor Simon. <laughs> if you're Kenyan, you understand that uh, people, people from Pastor Simon's uh, ethnic background, they're attracted to bright colors. <laughs> That's a stereotype. But you know what? I, I am like that. In fact, I used to say to Pastor S, between me and him, I'm the one who's more of the, the cow. Because I love, I, I mean, I notice bright colors. So when I was dating my wife, I would buy her these brilliant, you know, uh, or even when we got married, I'd buy her, if I traveled, I'd bring her a nice bango or a, ch a chain. When we got married, I'd buy her a nice, beautiful dress. And I mean, it looked amazing. I mean, I, so I thought, I mean, because that's what I notice when I look at, when I see a woman in a bright outfit, that's what I notice. Mm -hmm. um, and, and beautifully, my wife would wear it mm -hmm. and look very beautiful. Then when we got married and after going through a few, after a little bit, I started noticing my wife did not like those. She, okay, she didn't even tell me. She just was not wearing the dresses I'd buy. Them. And the more I dressed, the, the, bought them, the less she'd wear them. Mm -hmm. um, and until in fact, one day I remember going to a party and seeing the dress on her sister, my dress. <laughs> I and I asked her, what is my dress doing on your sister? You know? The dress I hoped you'd wear and you didn't want to wear. And at that point I realized my wife did not like bright colors. Mm -hmm. uh, when we were dating and in the dream phase, she wore them just because she liked me, but she actually did not like those dresses. Mm -hmm. uh, and imagine for me, this was much deeper than a dress because my sinful nature, the part of me that had a dream, my dream was to have this amazing, attractive, loud, you know, a wife who when I walk into the building, everybody stops. All my friends understand that I've arrived, you know, that was my the hidden dream there. Uh, and now I've married a woman who does not like attention. She does not like people looking at her. She'd rather mm -hmm. be in the background. Mm -hmm. And for me, that almost, as much as it, now it sounds funny to talk about it, at the point it felt like I'm dying because I had this, I've had this dream since I was a kid. I mean, I've always thought this is the wife I'm marrying. And now I've just stuck with a wife who does not want any attention. That means I'll never be able to walk into a room and my boys just stop what they're doing and say, wow, there they are, you know? <laughs> so it was very threatening. And I remember yeah. just really trying to push her to change. Uh, and that's just, I'm giving, that's, that's one example. There's a hundred of other things I was trying to change, but that's just mm. one example.
Yeah. And discovery is when I finally reach the place where I realize, you know what, this is not a woman that uh, I had thought I was marrying. And I began to ask God, okay, so show me what, so show me who I marry. And then I began to discover that there's something that is different. I thought that all colors were either bright or dull. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, I've married a dull wife. <laughs> <laughs> Only to discover, actually, it's not dull or bright. There are other shades in between. There are colors called pastel colors and earth tones. And although, you know, now as a man, you're thinking, what is those? You know, what are, what are, what are those? I began to realize the beauty of earth tones and my wife loved those tones. And so I started to realize, actually, I may not have gotten what I wanted, but I got something different, something unique, mm. something I'd never even understood. And it led me to a whole understanding of color that this man had never mm. had. So I'm using that as just one example, but it goes mm. into a whole scheme of how you relate with your outlaws, how you relate with money, how you relate with children. All these things are happening at the same time. And mm. a discovery is when you're stopping to try and change that other person's perception and you're saying, God, so who is this person? Let me try and understand them on their own terms. Mm -hmm. yeah. So discovery sets in and you're not fighting anymore. As um, Yvonne Gatobu is saying, you become a retired general of conflict. Almost everything you say, sometimes you say something and you just notice silence. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the first thought as a man is, what did I do this time? You know, yeah. because there's so much of that. But yeah. I think when you get into discovery, and I think she can relate, there's a time you just, all of a sudden, you start realizing, hey, it's been a while since we felt that tension. Yeah. It's like the tension just leaves. And mm -hmm. it's a great space because now what's happening is you're beginning to accept the difference mm. of the other person. So discovery, you begin to discover the other person, to discover yourself more, and uh, to discover those other colors you're talking about. Uh, <laughs> but you, yeah, you begin so, to... And to yeah. make it real, I mean, say maybe the woman married a man she thought would be commanding, would yeah. be uh, uh, would be the leader, would be charging, and then she married a guy who's very laid back, doesn't mm. want that. And mm -hmm. in in drama, she's fighting to get him to do what she wants. Mm -hmm. Discovery is when she says, "Okay, God, I didn't get that. What did I get? Show me what mm -hmm. this laid back guy really is." Mm -hmm. uh, because maybe in her mind, there was either uh, that that strong charging guy and a lazy guy. She didn't mm -hmm. understand they are thoughtful, intel intelligent men in between mm -hmm. there somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so it, I think it's, this thing is, is so real because it, it, it works for all of us. There's a dream we mm -hmm. had. Mm -hmm. There's something that we thought was the opposite of that dream, but mm -hmm. our spouse is neither of those things. There's something mm -hmm. beautiful that we're yet to discover. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Pastor Carol, um, someone has said why conflicts come at the night. Of course, there's a man asking and um, uh, and then uh, a, a lady is asking uh, how a woman, Motindi, is asking how can, um, can men have expectations of the night uh, when there's conflict going? Uh, but as you try to answer that, um, Pastor M talked about giving up. Uh, doesn't giving up feel like giving in? Okay. Um... I think in this particular phase, when we say giving up, mm. um, I, I think uh, uh, whether I prefer to think about it is giving it up to God. Mm -hmm. And it is coming to the place where we realize, you know what? Mm. We do not have what it takes. Between the two of us, we do not have what it takes to have a sensible conversation, mm -hmm. uh, even, you know, to even get ourselves out of, out of this um, <coughs> drama phase. We do mm. not have, and I think it is, um, it, is a, it is a humbling thing. It is yeah. a very humbling thing mm. because you know, you're coming into marriage, you're, you, you may be the most competent person at your place of work, but when it comes to your marriage, you know, you're having the greatest of fights. And so it's a very humbling thing uh, to realize that you actually don't have what it takes. And mm. I think that is okay. That is okay because only then can you begin to receive the help that mm. you need. And the help can be in two ways. It might just be that as you pray, you now begin to hear God. Because I think God does not come into a situation that has not been surrendered. We mm. truly do surrender it. So it's not mm. giving it. It is actually giving it up to God so that you mm. can receive the help that you need and you get the transformation. Yeah. And also maybe just to add and say, mm. what happens for many people is you just get tired. You know, insanity is trying to do the same thing over and over and over and hoping for a different result. At some point you realize, if I keep doing this, I'm going to get insane. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And I think for many people, it's just that pragmatic way. You're like, you know what? Let me just leave this person to their God. Even even people who don't know God get to that place sometimes mm-hmm. where you're just like, look, I can't even change this person. So mm-hmm. let me stop focusing on them and let's, let me start focusing on myself and my faith and mm-hmm. my stability, my sanity. Mm-hmm. And I think at that point, the tension leaves the relationship because the tension was based on both of you uh, in this unholy agreement where I'm changing you and you're changing me. <laughs> what yes. happens is when one of you gives up changing the other, then the other one is found, they find themselves in a, like a child mm-hmm. uh, because I'm pushing you and then you're not mm-hmm. pushing back. And it's very unsatisfying yeah. to be the only child in the relationship. So yeah. either I have to grow up or remain the child. And usually what happens when one spouse changes, the other is yeah. forced to begin to change as well. Okay. Well, thank you. And I'm coming to you, John and Hassan, and uh, just asking you some of the things you have begun because you're towards the tail end of your drama. Uh, you began to notice about the other person, uh, but also about yourself that you're beginning to feel, okay, uh, one of the things that my wife, uh, Sophia, did a while ago is to say, you know what, I've just come to a point where I've realized I don't have to prove anything to you. Uh, it's okay just to be myself. And uh, she says that was very freeing for me. And I began to see another confidence in her, which was attractive, actually, uh, mm-hmm. that she wasn't trying to do, uh, to pretend. Uh, she was just being real. Uh, you know, I think we pretend a lot uh, sometimes. Uh, drama tries to take that away. And, and um, Simon Molay is uh, asking, is conflict uh, necessary in marriage? Must it, must it happen? And last week, if you listen to last week, Simon, uh, you will know that we said conflict is a gift. It's a reality that you can never wish away in any relationship. It doesn't matter which, um, including marriage. Uh, and it's more, it's not if you're going to have it, it's how you're going to use it uh, for the blessing of the relationship. Uh, but John, what are some of the things you've begun to notice about this man and say, after all, he's not that bad? Um, I, I think I, uh, when, uh, when the drama, the deep, deep drama, uh, it was really a hard stage. It was, it was really tough, mm-hmm. but then, um, you reach a point and you you realize you know what uh, should we be fighting all the time should it mm. be uh, uh, you know you you kind of you poke him you try mm. to get you know you did this you know uh, you actually try to rub it in like mm. every day but mm. you know you reach a point and you realize do I have to be this way or do I have to be poking him I mm. think I can I can solve some issues I can try and and work out these issues without poking him. Like um, the, the example I, I, I like to give is picking up uh, clothes or mm-hmm. not dropping the clothes in the hamper. And <laughs> I realized, you know what, what does it take? My hand is not heavier when I carry mm-hmm. the clothes. And um, I think I'm, my back is not breaking when I pick up the clothes. Uh, instead of having the conflicts all the time, what does it take for me to just pick up the clothes? And just have peace. I don't have to ask him, you didn't pick up your clothes. Even today, you didn't. Even like realize what, what will it cost me to pick up those clothes? So, and then, but then I think he's realized I no longer poke him for that. And he started acting on it. And he's, he's, pick, he's actually dropping the clothes in the hamper. He's organized organizing the clothes into the hamper himself, which I love. You know, when you just, Realize that it, it doesn't take much effort to do the things yourself. You mm-hmm. get to a place whereby you just let, just like uh, Pastor Kara <clears throat> said, surrender. When you surrender to God and just have a peace, it actually mm-hmm. gives you a peace when you realize that this actually, I'm, I got married to a human being, not mm-hmm. an angel. It mm-hmm. gives you a peace to know that they have weaknesses and they have strength. So their weaknesses, I don't have to rub them in for them to feel that they are weak at a particular point. But mm. I just need to embrace the whole person I got married to because I did marry mm. only the good part. Mm. I married the whole man. So I need to embrace even the, the weak part that I got married to. Mm. And then in new season, God works upon people and mm. people do change. They do change yeah. for the better. So, yeah. yeah. 
So you realize this man is actually organized. He can organize clothes, not he, just he by can. picking them, but even Very. inside the hamper, he's going to organize it, yeah? Very true. <laughs> All right, um, Hassan, I think there's a, a question there about um, uh, rights in the night and, 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 and for men, and maybe you can say something to it. Uh, but I think what is coming across, uh, as you say, what you have begun to discover as well, uh, is that um, you get to a point, as uh, Pastor M said, that you just mature up. Uh, and once you begin to let the other person uh, act immature, it becomes embarrassing for them. So they grow up as well. And I think Pastor M gave an example uh, last week. Uh, and uh, it's very hard because the fear for a lot of women, especially, is if I, I do that, then the man is going to take advantage of me. Um, and I remember my wife saying one time, uh, and she's, uh, you know, I, I celebrate Sophia. Uh, she is just a mature woman, a great woman. And she told me once, two statements she told me that made me grow up. Uh, one, she said, there's nothing you will do in this marriage that I'll never forgive you. Now, that sounded like license, uh, but it's very much, you know, causes you to mature overnight <laughs> and realize that you can't mess up. You can't keep playing around uh, because this uh, person is not uh, as childish as you're trying to play. Uh, so you grow up in a hurry. Uh, and then also talking about the night rides, uh, one day she just told me, you know, I want you to know that uh, I'm happy to minister to you. You know, you, you can use a bit of church language <laughs> to minister to you, whether we have had a conflict or not. Uh, I'll not feel like you're misusing me if you really want ministry uh, or, uh, or the night rites, uh, then uh, you will have that. And I think for me, that was so sobering that you wouldn't do it uh, if there's a conflict you need to resolve. You will feel foolish uh, not, to do, not to talk about it. Uh, so it's just very sobering. When you see a mature person, it becomes like a mirror right in front of you. Uh, and, and you just got to, to grow up. But um, I don't know what, uh, Hassan, you would say, some of the things you've begun to discover and anything you want to say to the men around that. And then we'll come to the Moridis and just uh, begin to see uh, around, especially midlife, uh, some of the challenges and dangers of discovery uh, as we move towards the last stage. Uh, Hassan. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Um... One of the things that really have built a bridge for us to really begin making the transition from drama uh, mm. discovery is uh, my personal realization that, you know what? Perhaps this is not the dream, which is what the Maureen is talking to, uh, that I, I wanted for, for, for marriage. Mm. But the realization that this is actually God's dream for me mm. because mm. she makes me better. Mm -hmm. I realize that some of the qualities that Joan has, mm -hmm. some of the gifts she has, I do not have. Mm -hmm. So there's a way she compliments me so well. And because the way I'm wired, the things that I serve in, I'm always at the fore, kind of like Pastor M. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm the one shining, I'm the one speaking at the pulpit, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And she's a back end person like Pastor Carol. Mm -hmm. But she carries this wisdom, this sense of support that is, I feel so anchored. Mm -hmm. uh, I realized, you know what, this is God's gift for me. Mm -hmm. And when that uh, light bulb went on in my mind, mm -hmm. it became a newly wrapped dream for me. Yeah. Yeah. I could never trade her for anything because I realized mm -hmm. right now that, you know what, there's just something that she, she does that just completes me. One mm -hmm. of the things that we we put in place concerning conflict mm -hmm. we, is there's something I call invitation. I have invited her into my world, especially when we are not fighting, when you're just having conversation. I tell her, look, when we are fighting, the reason I act the way I act is because ABCD is going on in my mind, mm -hmm. is going on in my ego, is going on in my own fears and insecurities. And every time you continue this way, it is like you're getting um, a jerry can of, of fuel and putting it to the fire. Mm -hmm. And I tell her, you know how I've been raised, 
how I grew up in a very abusive, machete kind of. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to, to back up, back out of a fight. So mm. I told her, please do me this favor. Mm. When you see me charging up, mm. just do not provoke me. <laughs> um, so I told her, keep quiet. You, you are gifted in keeping quiet. Just keep quiet. I will notice that I'm such a fool and somehow I will let the thing go. And you know, having those sober conversations when we are not fighting, mm -hmm. we're able to draw from them in times of mm -hmm. drama and uh, to apply them and they actually work. Mm -hmm. Now, um, when we're in conflict, I used in the drama stage, I used to want this thing back and forth to continue because mm -hmm. there's a way it gave me arsenal and leverage and mm -hmm. then I would feel bad after it. Right now, when Joan notices that I'm, I'm beginning to raise my temperature, she just calms mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. We have less conflicts. Mm -hmm. We have a way of managing conflict because I invited her into this broken guy that is trying to work on, um, work on me as the Lord works mm -hmm. on me. And she has helped me on that journey yeah. uh, because she's understanding. So my encouragement to men is really uh, just to, to have conversations around what goes on in your mind mm -hmm. when there's drama. Mm -hmm. Why do you act the way you act? But mm -hmm. do it when you're on a date and when you're not fighting. And perhaps mm -hmm. Ash can be able to draw on those. The second thing that you talked about, the night rides, and uh, mm -hmm. these are conversations we've had. Joan mm -hmm. cannot find herself mm -hmm. to be mentally and emotionally ready for ministry when we've had a conflict. And for me, I'm a, I compartmentalize. Mm. Like when it comes to this thing, because its need in my life is second only to air that I breathe, uh, I'm able to put away all the conflicts for ministry, then I will pick up conflict later. <laughs> that does not register with her. Uh, so she has learned, um, and she is learning, that look, this guy, if I don't offer ministry, I don't even know what to expect because... So it's, we, we're also working through those. For her not to... During the drama stage, she used to use sex a lot. Well, mm. that was my perception. But for her, she was emotionally broken. My perception is she used to use it as a tool to fight mm. against me. But she did it. She just didn't know how to connect the conflict with. So for me, it's also balancing and having conversations around that. Mm. Uh, it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Well, those are good points. Um, first time we're coming to you, but just a hint of something that really has helped us and uh, helped us a lot during our drama. We used to have uh, what I used to call gum chewing dates. I generally don't chew gum, but uh, this one day in a month, I would do that. <clears throat> and uh, we would go on this date and um, uh, the rules were, you just sit down and listen to the other person and let them tell you what's going on and what's wrong with you. And you have no right of response until after seven days. <laughs> uh, so you listen, write down notes, and go home. <laughs> uh, and so she would start, of course. And the lawyer in me would just boil up as she is uh, saying those things, and I'm writing them down. I have more than five defenses and explanations of those issues. But I can't give my defense until after seven days. Uh, then after that, I would tell her the same, but not in reference to anything she raised, just what I had prepared to tell her. And then we would pray and go home. And of course, the drive home was pretty quiet. Uh, thank God for music uh, on the stereo. Uh, and we'll get home and you would think about those, what you were taught for, the, for a week. When we met a week after, most of the time there wasn't much to defend. Because you've had us seven days to look at what she said and realize actually she was right in most of the things. And there'd be more confession and repentance, asking for forgiveness uh, when we met. Now, I know some of you may be wondering about this word ministry. Those of you who are not religious. Uh, ministry just means uh, meeting another person's need. Uh, <laughs> Uh, with a lot of love. <laughs> and so that's what we are using for uh, conjugal rights, so intimacy. I, think, I, 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 I rights. think we just should say the word. I mean, I yeah. think it's, it's important for us to say sex because yeah. Yeah. I believe at this stage, there are no children watching. 
and I think one of the one of the one of the rules we made for ourselves because I believe in drama you need to make rules for yourselves. Yeah. So you actually need to say how do we manage conflict as a couple? And I love what the one we're doing, and even yours because I think what you're saying is we made our own rules. Mm-hmm. So for Hassan and Jawan, it was like let me tell you who I am, so you mm-hmm. understand how I respond. So that when you, whenever mm-hmm. you see me do this, then please understand this is not the time for you to do that. That that that's mm-hmm. agreeing together. On how mm-hmm. we deal with conflict. I think what you're saying with That's Sophie, right. we get to take off and sit somewhere, and it was like a rule: we do this to manage mm-hmm. conflict. So for mm-hmm. us, one of the ones we would clearly say is conflicts are conflict only happens above the belt. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing below the belt. <laughs> <laughs> this is now using metaphors like like yeah. ministry. So that that <laughs> metaphor, that tech was never a tool. It's yeah. never a tool. Uh, mm-hmm. Because the Bible actually even clearly says that it talks about never using sex as a tool against your spouse. It says the only time that you can actually not, you can actually withhold from your spouse is for the purpose of prayer. And mm-hmm. you cannot say I'm praying about the fight we had. So mm-hmm. you know that, that's that's misusing scripture. <laughs> but even beyond that, I think part of it was the realization that the enemy yeah. is not my spouse. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's an enemy out there who, when we divide it. Actually, mm. with mm. and so one of the things we say to ourselves is we'll be parking our conflict. So there's a place where mm. we say, "All right, we've talked enough about this today. We're not going to finish this issue. We put on the parks. We say, okay, uh, it's time for us to park this. We can continue tomorrow at five after work. But between now and five, we're not enemies. And actually, mm. we'd even affirm and say, can we be friends? And we'll be friends. Mm. And at that point, we're able to actually even uh, engage uh, mm. in that way. And mm. uh, and actually have sex because it's not involved with our conflict. Our conflict has something to do with other things. Uh, mm. There's an issue between us, but the issue is mm. not us. Mm. So I think that, that was one of our rules, but I really encourage mm. every couple to mm. make their rules because I think what mm. happens is when you use our sex as a tool in a cold war, uh, it always devolves and you just go from one thing to the other, you know, mm. uh, withholding what you think the other person needs. So, so, so absolutely, I, I just want to affirm what both of you are saying. No, thank you. And and we're coming back to both of you just to talk about uh, the discovery stage. Uh, And I think, um, in fact, I think it's in Doha, we use the word ministry. Uh, And what we say about ministry uh, is um, whenever you begin to see life as meeting the other person's need, so that sex is not about you. uh, And when you're not ready, then you use it again as the other person. You see it as a way of uh, blessing the other person. Uh, yeah. That sex is not just about you. So if you don't want it, then your uh, the, your spouse can uh, can you know uh, stay without it. But you see it as a way of a blessing to the other person, and I love that attitude uh, that uh, Sophie had. But talking about discovery and uh, midlife. <laughs> now, what what happens in discovery? And discovery is a very uh, it's, the first thing is a sense of relief. Mm. So if you've been in drama, and, and drama, by the way, I just want to really emphasize for people listening, because we're so afraid of conflict, and because mm. we come from cultures that are afraid of conflict and family cultures, mm. we are afraid of drama. And so many people, when they hear 12 years, they say, oh my God, can I survive? Mm. Not understanding what Pastor S said, that it's actually a gift, mm. because it's only through the, the conflict, and by conflict, I don't mean violence, mm-hmm. uh, I don't mean being mean to each other, I mean the disagreements it's mm-hmm. as you're rubbing each other like sandpaper that you smooth each other and become who God created you to both be. Mm-hmm. And it's only that conflict that will or disagreement that will help you actually understand each other. You get to know, it's a process of knowing the other person. And like you mm-hmm. said, it happens in work teams, it happens in, in friendships, it happens in marriage. So mm-hmm. it's a very necessary thing to go through. So mm-hmm. what happens is when you go, when you enter the stage of discovery and mm-hmm. all of a sudden conflict is not a daily reality. It's not a, mm-hmm. that, that tension has gone mm-hmm. away. Mm-hmm. There's so much relief that typically what happens is now people start focusing on things outside the marriage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So for maybe it's the kids, uh, mm-hmm. for the wife, it's like I get absorbed with the kids or it's my career. So mm-hmm. we both become absorbed with our careers or it's other mm-hmm. things. And mm-hmm. typically what's happening at that point, because yeah, 12 years in, you're, about, you're also beginning to bump onto that midlife space. Mm-hmm. Uh, you start to now, as a man, you're beginning to question your, your sense of achievement because that's mm-hmm. what's happening in your mid-40s. 
You're beginning mm. to wonder, was life, have I achieved the things I, I thought I'd achieved by now? There's a mm. lot of self-doubt. So mm. what tends to happen then is you throw yourself into your career uh, mm. and often at the expense of your relationship. Um, and, and for women, uh, it happens a little later, but it also happens for them as well. Uh, mm. so, so Hassan, when you talk about your wife being uh, at the background, uh, she's happy to be in the background, uh, that's actually past tense for me. Um, mm. Because at midlife, that switches for women as well, where mm. they, even they go through that stage of, and I know Pastor mm. S, uh, he's been married for a little longer, he can tell you this mm. is true, where your wife now starts also wanting to be in the forefront. Where mm-hmm. she's like, I've lived my life as a mom. I've lived my life as, as everything else. I've been defined mm-hmm. by other people. <clears throat> Who am I now? And mm-hmm. now she starts doing things for herself. And it can be very threatening mm-hmm. as well in the marriage. Yeah. So, so yeah. that midlife space also adds different dynamics in a marriage. Mm-hmm. And as much mm-hmm. as discovery is a great phase because you're no longer in conflict, the danger now is you can start to drift apart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, the, the, the divorce of stage Two is very different from the divorce of stage three. People who divorce in, in, in drama, it's lawyers, it's, it's anger, it's resentment. People who divorce in d- discovery, it's usually we're friends, we co-parent, we just don't have anything, we don't have enough to bring us together, but we're still mm-hmm. friends. You know, it's, it's almost like you just have drifted so mm-hmm. far that you just almost realize we actually don't have anything left. Uh, mm-hmm. That's the biggest danger in discovery. That conflict yeah. is what was keeping you together, but now there's no mm-hmm. conflict. It's almost like you find mm-hmm. yourself beginning to drift mm-hmm. apart because mm-hmm. you're so focused on the external, mm-hmm. uh, no longer on one another. Uh, that's right. I, I love that. And we're in discovery with my wife. I mean, we've been married for 22 uh, years. Yeah. And so we've come to that place of discovery. It doesn't mean there's no conflict at all. And uh, Pastor Carol, you could come in here and as well speak from uh, the female perspective. Uh, you'll have a conflict once in a while and it could be very threatening. I mean, I remember us arguing with uh, Sophie uh, about, um, and, and it's what you were saying, Pastor time that they want to be at the forefront. They no longer just want to be, a, uh, you know, been at the, by your side for too long now. Um, I also want to be seen and it can feel very threatening for a man. And we were arguing about one of the books that I've written and she said, I don't feel like you have acknowledged me enough in this book. <laughs> my contribution uh, so I want you to say this and I'm thinking what's what's what difference does it make I don't see the difference but it's a huge thing for her I mean I felt threatened uh, uh, it was a simple thing right it was a big uh, conflict um, Pastor Caro I know the other thing that happens is that uh, the sex drive begins to reduce for the men, uh, and it's probably now uh, going pretty up uh, for the ladies. And just some of the challenges around that from a female perspective. Simon, you have seen you throw me deep into that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can see John is listening, so give us some hints. <laughs> I think what happens is that um, you see, I think a woman at this time is. Um, are becoming more assertive. Mm-hmm. And um, even as we're talking about um, the whole thing of wanting to come to the forefront, mm-hmm. you know, to say the escorting ministry is over. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the escorting ministry, which was, you know, escorting our spouses. Uh, but I think what we mean, or what happens at that time that you're saying, uh, I think I need to provide more balance because the Bible mm-hmm. does talk about, you know, supporting your spouse. But at this time, it is, you know, there's a whole thing of more balance where you're saying, I'm going to support you in these things, but I also need to be doing this other things for myself. And I believe it's as a result of that assertiveness mm-hmm. that, um, that yes, then the, the, the drive kicks in. Mm-hmm. Um, and and um, yeah, just, I think it's just the assertiveness. And mm-hmm. um, now, know, now know what you want. Um, uh, and so I think it's just that that shift that happens that makes you mm. more active. And when we look at guys, but but also I'd say there are some hormonal things going on for women as well. Yeah, that's right. Because as you're entering midlife as a woman, your your hormones are changing. Uh, mm. Your your for, for your estrogen is reducing. Is reducing. Mm. Yeah, mm. Your, your testosterone. And some there testosterone is going up. Is a bit. Yeah. For men, it's actually the opposite. Your your testosterone is beginning to go down as well because you've achieved. It's almost like I've been there, 
And so for that time as a man, you're like slowing down. You're like, let's, mm. let's, let's be together. Let's slow down. We've worked so hard all our lives. And your wife is looking at you like, who has worked? What? You're the one who has been in your career. I've not achieved mine yet. Uh, you, you relax at home. Yeah, I've got, a, I've got, I've things, got to things to do. Mm. And so you can find a lot of uh, mismatch at that point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But also because yes. again, like you say, I mean, at that point, let me just uh, encourage all the the men. the men in. Well, I don't even know if it's encouragement. It's because I remember when I was told this and I was in my thirties, I thought that's a lie. But I in fact, you looked at that older man and just said, "I'm so sorry guy, for him." You know, because he said, "What's going to happen, happen to is in your midlife, uh, you are going to find as a man your sex drive uh, really goes down, and your wife has gone uh -huh. up, and so you're the one who will be saying, sweetie I have a headache today. Can we just cuddle?" <laughs> <laughs> and and she'll be looking at you like in disbelief like what do you mean and uh and i mean of course when we were told that we used to think are you kidding i looked at that guy and i thought this guy needs prayer uh but it's actually I going to happen really prayer. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's okay we'll talk in 10 years okay <laughs> and uh and so one of the things i say to people is treat her well yeah uh, treat her well because uh the situation is going to change uh, mm. You're going to find yourselves reversing uh, when it mm. comes to that, when it comes to in that middle of a discovery phase. Yeah, and I think when that happens, it can be a feeling of emasculation for the men. And so, just to say to the ladies, be very understanding, talk through it. Um, there are different ways to solve it. Um, yeah, Pastor Kara, I've been in a marital. Um, conversation where the man, I think, got to that place and he lost confidence when he realized he wasn't performing and he just withdrew. And for five years, he was saying nothing and not even trying. And the woman is saying, so why am I, what am I doing in this marriage? And this my guy is an elder in the church. Uh, what do I do? Because he's not just talking about this. Um, and so these are realities that some of the uh, couples go through. And, and as we have said, they're, they're there are different ways that uh, this can be done there. Uh, there's some um, humble ways to increase libido for the man and deal with some of these things, but especially having an honest conversation. A lot of men run away from it and just make it harder for, for, the, for the relationship. Yeah, but I, I believe too there's a way of um, <laughs> wooing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think there's a way. Uh, I think what marriage does is mm -hmm. that it, if you're low in your emotional mm. intelligence, then mm. Mm. You're, you're going to really be tested in this. There's a way of wooing someone mm. Mm. and, um, you, you know, your spouse. There's a way of doing it. There's a way of encouraging. There's a way of celebrating. There's a way of just doing it so that, um, uh, be, yeah, just, just so that, you know, you know your, the, your husband will not feel... Mm. Uh, will not feel emasculated and um, it's just it, it's almost like as we're saying the role reversal well maybe earlier on maybe for Hassan you're wooing Joanne there mm. will come a time when it will be Joanne who is mm. you know just and and and, and, I, and I think there's a way that women do it and I think that there's a way that as a woman you can do it and and, mm. and I think I mean, you can flat, you can, mm. it, it can be. So it's not. I, I think the key thing is to just realize in every one of these stages, and we'll move to stage four if you'll allow mm. us time. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. in every one of these stages, there is a, there's a growth. Mm -hmm. so as much as we've moved from drama, now we're in discovery. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of discovery is now I'm beginning to appreciate the person. I'm mm -hmm. beginning to understand who God gave me. I'm beginning to. Mm accept it you know i'm mm. no longer fighting who you are i'm no mm. longer looking for the man who will, mm. will stand in front of people and everybody will respect uh, mm. because that's not who you are god gave you a chilled nature i'm not looking for that girl who walks into the room and everybody stops mm. because god gave me a more a background or chilled person before that i resented that but now i'm looking and saying okay so now that god gave me this mm. who is this person and actually beginning to appreciate that in every person there is strength. In every person there is genius. I just have to stop looking for what I was looking for and actually accept, as Hassan mm. said earlier, uh, mm. this is the gift God has given me. Because it's actually God mm. gave me not what I wanted, he gave me what I needed. Mm. So once I start to enter that space, uh, mm. remember in every one of these spaces there are dangers. But mm. if you leave your spouse, mm. and this is what we say in Doha, because when we mm. discovered this, we wrote, as Pastor Simon said, we wrote this uh, as part of the Ndoa curriculum. 
Um, mm -hmm. One of the things we say is if you leave your spouse at any one of these uh, stages, you will go back to zero mm -hmm. and you mm -hmm. start with a new spouse and you start with dream phase again and mm -hmm. start eating. So it's like, why would you want to do that? This is what I tell mm -hmm. people who are in the place where they're saying we're separating, we're leaving. Mm -hmm. I'm like, please understand this because what mm -hmm. you're going to do is you're going to start all over again. And because you've not dealt with the issues, mm -hmm. you're going to start from scratch and have to deal with those issues in the next marriage. You might mm -hmm. as well deal with them in this one. Now, mm -hmm. the last phase, and I, uh, mm -hmm. I, I, if you allow me, I'll just mention it and then we can, we can chat about it, Pasi. This yeah. one, I think it's, it's probably the one where it gave us the most hope. Mm -hmm. Because when we discovered this, we're in a place where our marriage was actually not doing very well. We're deep in drama, very disillusioned, challenged. And then uh, we learned about the four stages. And the fourth stage is called mm -hmm. depth. And depth, uh, coming mm -hmm. from the word deep, uh, mm -hmm. depth, is really that place where you stop even appreciating the difference and start mm -hmm. celebrating the difference. Mm -hmm. and, and depth is where you start even, not even understanding intellectually, but even at the emotional level, you start mm -hmm. to resonate with the fact that actually God is a genius. Mm -hmm. He gave me not what I wanted. He gave me exactly what I, was, I needed in this person. And mm -hmm. it's very easy to say it right now, just say the words. But in depth is when you actually need that person in that way. You actually begin to rely on each other. You begin mm -hmm. to realize this is my dance partner. It becomes like a mm -hmm. dance. Mm -hmm. And many couples don't achieve depth mm -hmm. because they settle at one of these journeys. And when you're asking mm -hmm. earlier the question of settling, I think settling mm -hmm. is when you actually give up trying to move on in your marriage. You give up mm -hmm. having hope that you can actually grow. And mm -hmm. you settle. So many people enter stage three of discovery mm -hmm. and they're comfortable there because we no longer mm -hmm. have conflict. Mm -hmm. let's just not even push beyond that let's just be now we're friends we come home we're not arguing mm -hmm. uh we look after our children we go to church mm -hmm. together we're both in ministry so they settle there and the mm -hmm. reason is because they've never had a vision that there's something way better and, mm -hmm. and that depth, that depth the few couples we've met and we've met couple we've had the privilege of having couples who are mentors who are in depth faith mm -hmm. you enjoy being around them uh mm -hmm. you actually being in their presence, it just feels embracing. You are, there's something attractive about mm -hmm. couples. And they're, they're usually not young couples because yeah. one of the things that we were taught at that point is usually it takes about 25 years of marriage mm -hmm. and above to start mm -hmm. appreciating that. And that's assuming you're working towards uh, growing mm -hmm. in your marriage. Yeah. And so, and like I said, many couples don't achieve, don't get out of stage two or out of stage three. Uh, okay. But when we began to understand that it gave us hope and we made a commitment to each other, you know what? regardless mm -hmm. of the difference, regardless of the challenges, we are going to work together on this marriage because we want to be those couples. We want to be one of those couples who actually mm -hmm. achieve them. And so that's our vision. That's our, our friendship is based on the fact that God gave us something beautiful and we believe that by God's grace, we will experience it and have actually begun to experience it. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I love that. And we're coming to you, Pastor Carol, just to give a word of hope. And then we'll come to the Hassans. And um, uh, you just tell us a word uh, for many who are struggling. I think marriage is a big thing, the kind of uh, words and questions. And someone is asking how, you know, how that um, uh, counseling session ended for that lady who had not... Um, uh, um, you know, I've not had sex for five years uh, because of a husband. Uh, well, thankfully, they are still together. They worked it out. They talked about it and realized uh, eventually it was something that could have been helped. But it's just that he wasn't uh, talking about it. Uh, but just to say to all of you, uh, we're going to be finishing in another 10 minutes. Uh, and so keep it here in case you want to get involved in any of those programs. Uh, feel free to let us know. Uh, the Moridis. Uh, and Mavuno Church, we run the door, door program. I would highly recommend it for uh, before you get married and for those of you already married uh, to be able to uh, get involved in it. Uh, if you go to the Mavuno website, uh, you will find it. And, and uh, Pastor Ayman Karo, they have written several books uh, that they'll probably mention. Uh, but also a few of you have come back and asked me about uh, the couple that we were with a few weeks ago uh, and about the houses. Uh, I will do this for them uh, because 
uh, we are good partners. Uh, but if you look at the screen, we have these um, uh, Savo, Skywalk, uh, off Ngong Road. Uh, there's no interest. You can get a five-year payment plan. Uh, and uh, the, uh, you see the uh, what they're selling uh, them for right there. Uh, and so feel free to let uh, to reach out to them. Uh, it's a good deal. Uh, they're good, honest uh, Christians, and it's just been good working with them. So I uh, just wanted to share that, and we'll share it on our uh, pages. And those of you who would like to, uh, to, to, to pursue that, feel uh, free, and you're welcome. Uh, so let me get back to you, uh, Cara. Feel free to mention uh, any of the conversations you have. I know you have a talk, uh, and do a talk uh, every week. Uh, as we as we begin to wrap up and talk about the hope that there is in spite of all of these stages. Uh, you're muted. Uh, the Bible, uh, yeah, the Bible mm -hmm. does say that plans fail because of lack mm -hmm. of plans. And mm -hmm. I think what happens is that when people find themselves um, saying drama or they, they get stuck, then people mm -hmm. feel shame. Mm -hmm. Feel shame and you feel like this is a personal failure. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, you feel not man enough, you feel not woman enough. And because of that, you do not seek help. So what I'd like to say is as much as we've been talking about these uh, phases that you're going through, they can be mediated. Mm -hmm. I think with good mentors, with good counselors, with people who are able to hold your hand and tell you, by the way, this is doable. This is what you do. This is the way you manage your conflict. This is what we have done. And you, you feel free to borrow whatever it is that we, you know, that we talk about. Uh, it can be mediated so that it is not so rough. Mm -hmm. You need not walk alone. I think mm -hmm. that is what I can say. And uh, I know, Pastor Simon, you've asked about um, our mentoring program. We do have a marriage mentoring program. And, um, and this one is, uh, we do have a community where mm -hmm. it's a mentoring community for couples. It's free of charge, so you can do that. And it's Ndoa Couples Community. Uh, you, you join that, join the family, and you get your mentorship. Thank you. And I know there's someone on that who had said they would want to have a one-on-one -on -one with you. So I think they can follow you and uh, get your context to be able to see you uh, in that. Uh, all right, Hassan's. And, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, I think is uh, someone here who has said uh, Musinguzi. Uh, that should be from Uganda. John's expressions are priceless. They're explaining all my thoughts. <laughs> John, uh, you're blessing some people with your expressions. So, uh, some words of advice and encouragement, John, uh, as we go through all of these stages. And I know some of the things we have said are uh, uh, in your future, and some of them may be a little scary, uh, but we always have confidence to do this, John. Um, mine on the depth page, um, I think when I was growing up, uh, I looked at my family and how we, we used to see drama, yes, but uh, mm. truthfully, my, my uncle and auntie had never, ever quarreled in front of us. We had never mm. seen them quarreling, but we knew there would be issues. And now we, we see um, they're in that depth stage. They've all the kids have gone, they're, they're getting married and they've moved uh, up country and we see God starting to work in, in them and they're walking a journey together because mm. they didn't give up on themselves at that stage, at the, mm. in the drama stage and the discovery stage. I think when you, when you just uh, choose, you have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. You have to make a choice and say, you know what, we are in this together for life. But you, if you're in for contractual moments, then that's, that's where the problem is. But if you resolved and say, you know, we are together for life, I will love you in the, in the hard times and in the good times. That's where things, you know that even when conflicts come, we can work it out. There is hope. We can, we can find solutions. We are not giving up on each other. That's very important. But if you're in for just a short time whereby you realize, uh, this is not for me. I'm just giving mm. up. I'm, I'm done. That's mm. where you find that uh, depth is, is not for you. Drama is where you stop and you believe in the whole, the mm. whole journey. There's no hope. You lose hope so mm. easily. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So if you're going into marriage, you need to really, really be resolved to be together for life. Don't go into just test the waters and believe. Just come together knowing that you're with this person for mm. life. You're with this person. You're going to love mm. them. Even when mm. things get hard, you will love them. Mm. And, mm. and you know what? When you just surrender to God, mm. you will mm. do marvelous things in your marriages and mm. everything. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, Hassan? Um, you know, my encouragement to couples um, there is that we've shared our lives and um, when I look at the, the, the three of us, we are in different stages mm-hmm. of our marriage. Uh, you've been married probably 20 years and up. We are just 12 years in. We represent probably a huge chunk of that marriage space. And uh, the things we are sharing are things we've gone through. Uh, one of the things I would like to encourage couples, especially those that are maybe deep in the drama stage, is seek help. Mm-hmm. There are tons of resources out there. Uh, John and I knew earlier on in our marriage, even before we got married, that the people that we modeled our marriage after, there are certain things they did. Number one is accountability. Mm-hmm. They had mentor couples. Mm-hmm. For us, that was a non-negotiable. We got mm-hmm. mentor couples right uh, after, after we got married. When we moved to Rwanda, we got ourselves um, a new pair of mentor couples that were closer to us. Mm-hmm. And uh, these are people who literally help guide us. The mm-hmm. other thing is that we have taken up every opportunity available to us, mm-hmm. be it marriage retreats. Um, mm-hmm. our, our church has invited Pastor Simon and mm-hmm. uh, Pastor Sophie a number of times to, for these retreats we have uh, at mm-hmm. our church. Uh, mm-hmm. we, we are the first to sign up. Why? Because we need that space. Uh, mm-hmm. There are books. There are amazing journeys, uh, like the eight weeks journey of Noah. By the way, we are, we've been discussing at, uh, at CLA, studying mm-hmm. Doha, and uh, I had started a few conversations with my friends at Mavuno Kigali mm-hmm. to see how we can get that started. I mean, there are tons of resources out there mm-hmm. uh, to help. The, the challenge we have is sometimes we are so consumed with our problems, mm-hmm. we feel like if we share our challenges, we are either confessing failure or a lack mm-hmm. of... Many marriages go through the things that you're going through. Uh, mm-hmm. But when you seek help, Mm. First of all, you realize that, hey, it's not just me, and uh, there are probably other people who have been dealt a worse hand Mm. Mm. than myself, but there is help out there. But the thing is, the two of you have to be willing to reach out Mm. for the help. And for me, that would be my encouragement. The reason we we can honestly say, Joanna and I, that Mm. we are, Mm. yes, 12 years in, but we are in the discovery stage. We were able to pass the drama stage maybe two years ago. Uh, why is because of all these things that we we applied ourselves to these resources, mm. these tools, the help that was out there, and we mm. did it in humility because we knew that uh, to be able to 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 go for life, mm. we need somebody to hold our hand, and yeah. it has helped a great deal. That would be my encouragement. Thank you, Thank you very much. Um, uh, I think just to say to all of us, uh, we are warriors. Uh, there's a huge war, uh, you know, energy. Uh, for fighting in each one of us. Uh, And I think growth and maturity is when we decide uh, not to use that against each other, but to use that force uh, to fight for the union, uh, for the marriage, because there's a reason why we came together. We saw something in in the other person uh, that was great. And even in the worst of us, there's something good. Uh, And in the best of us, there's something not good. Uh, So it's a journey of finding each other. First time, maybe your last words uh, before I close for us? I think, um, I think what I'll say is, um, and I've, there's some people who are struggling to get the link to, to work. Um, so what are the, for the Ndoa Couples community, let me just ask if you are struggling, because there's two things you could do. You could either copy the link and paste it in your browser, or mm-hmm. you could use this number and I'll copy this number and paste it as well. It's zero, it's plus two, five, four. 746-463-800. 746-463-800. If you copy that number mm-hmm. and uh, put it into your, and just send us a WhatsApp message on it, uh, we'll be able to put you in the community. So just send a WhatsApp communi- a message to that number. Mm-hmm. And I'll also try and paste it in the, in the conversation. But I think for me, what I'll say is God is more interested in the success of your marriage than you are. You need to understand that. 
I've seen so many comments in the group where people are watching and somebody's in despair. Somebody said, look, what if it's me who wants to change, but my spouse doesn't want to change? Maybe I should divorce them at that point. Divorce is an option. Listen to me. That is the devil speaking to you right now. You need to understand that. What God has put together, no person should put us under, including yourself. Huh? Mm -hmm. And so I think one of the things that you need to understand is God doesn't need a majority to make a miracle happen. He just needs one willing person in a marriage. Mm -hmm. And if that one willing person is willing to be yielded to God and allow mm -hmm. God to use them, mm -hmm. that's all God needs. He's not looking for an army. Look, at, look through mm -hmm. scripture. God always does a revolution through one willing person and mm -hmm. changes nations. Mm -hmm. And so I think one of the things I want to just encourage anybody out there is all God needs is your mustard seed faith mm. and your willingness to fight for that marriage. And then God can change. Actually, the best, some of the most incredible marriages Caro and I have had the privilege of meeting. I talked about the fact mm. that we've had the privilege of spending time with people in stage four. Uh, mm. I love the fact that Joanne says she's seen her, her relatives in that phase because many people don't actually even know what that phase looks like. And it's mm -hmm. only when people are older that you actually can tell, my goodness, this is a genuine thing. Um, it's, it's, there's a, there's a, there's a stage fourness about these guys that mm. is more than just, uh, mm. they've accepted each other. There's a, there's a mm. dance that they're getting into. Uh, mm. but many of those couples were actually couples who struggled greatly in their early years. Mm -hmm. In fact, I remember one of the ones that really, when I first learned about stage four, I'd not really witnessed it much until mm -hmm. I met a couple where there was mm. such a beautiful couple who were a pastor. Mm. And this woman uh, one day I asked her, how did you find such a great marriage? And she told us the story mm -hmm. of how this man was a drunk for mm -hmm. the first 15 years of their marriage. Mm -hmm. And he would drink all their money. And mm -hmm. she would be ridiculed because she'd go to, he'd drop her in church and then mm -hmm. forget to pick them up because he'd go and black out in a bar. Mm -hmm. And for 15 years of their marriage, that's what it was like. But mm -hmm. the woman prayed and friends in church held her accountable and she refused mm -hmm. to give up on, on this marriage. Mm -hmm. And one day the Lord broke through into that man's heart. Mm -hmm. And that man was so broken at that point. He actually told her, take me to your church. That church mm -hmm. that has caused you to pray for me all these years. He knew she was praying. Take me to that church. And the man gave his life to Jesus, uh, became friends with the pastor, became mentored by the pastor, became the assistant pastor of the church. And by the time we met him, that was their story. Mm -hmm. And they had an, and you know why they had such a beautiful marriage? She told us, it's because I've seen this guy at his worst. And I accepted mm -hmm. him anyway. And he's seen me in my worst. And we have nothing to prove to each other. We just love mm. each other with all our mess. And so mm. I want to just encourage anybody here. God is a God of hope and a God of a second chance. And mm. don't quit on your marriage because God mm. has not quit on you. So mm. uh, seek the help as, we, as you've been shared here. Find people to walk with. I uh, want to encourage any of you who's looking for, maybe some of you didn't build a foundation in your marriage. Uh, mm. We've got programs that we've talked about here. There's Noah, there's others. Um, mm. And maybe if your spouse is not ready, this is when you say, okay, as a man, my, my, my spouse is not ready, but I'm going to do man enough myself. Uh, mm. Because this is something I'm working on me. Remember we talked about it. We said mm. many times mm. we reverse it. We, we work on them and we pray for ourselves. Mm. But God's order is work on me, pray for them. So mm. maybe this is a time as a woman for you to do Ezra and just say, mm. let me stop trying to change him. Let me sign up for something mm. that will help me become the woman mm. God wants me to be. And maybe mm. when I become that person, I'll attract the man God wants me to attract in my husband. Mm. Mm. And so I think for me, my encouragement is never give up because God has not mm. given up. Yeah. Thanks, Pastor S. Amen. Well, thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, couples. I really appreciate. I think if there's one lesson I've learned in my journey of love and uh, marriage is that I'm a broken person. Uh, there's nothing else that has humbled me as much as this. Uh, I've made my mistakes. Uh, I've hurt my wife. And I've gotten to a point where I felt, especially as a Christian, that I love Jesus Christ. And um, I don't want to hurt uh, her, his daughter. And so it's like God is my father-in-law, you know. And I've come to a place where I felt like the way I'm treating God's daughter, uh, it's a sign of how much I love the father. Uh, and to me, that has really changed me. And there are times I've come to a place where I've said, I'm going to love my wife as a Christian. Uh, I'm not talking out of my faith. And not because she deserves it, but because God deserves it. Uh, God deserves to see a good expression 
expression of love. And so for me, loving my wife is an act of worship to the almighty God uh, who gave us a gift of marriage. Uh, and I want to do it uh, for her, uh, for me, but for God. Um, and, and just uh, 1 Corinthians 13, it's really about love. We talk about love. We do a lot for love. But many times we don't actually understand love. And Paul himself said, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up, uh, does not behave rudely, <clears throat> does not seek its own. It's not selfish. It's not easily provoked. Uh, it thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity uh, or in wrong, rejoices in truth, uh, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things and endures all things. And it says love never fails. Uh, prophecies and all of these things may fail, but love never fails. Uh, our prayer tonight is that uh, all of us, we will rediscover love as God created it. The kind of love that transforms us. I believe love is a summary of character. And I pray that God will conquer each one of us uh, with his love. And we're going to enjoy our marriages and make them a shining light to those who uh, watch around us. And especially for all of us who are Christians. Well, may the Lord bless you. It's been a great conversation. Uh, and I know there are many of us who are struggling. Uh, we have gone over time, but this is such an important subject. We could do a third session, uh, but we will not do that. Uh, I, I will just ask Joanne with your good uh, expressions to say a brief prayer uh, for all the couples out there, especially the younger ones who are wondering about the future and then we'll close. Joanne. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, today. Thank you for uh, the different stages we've we've gone through, uh, the the different stages that everyone is going through. Lord, we, we we thank you for everyone. Thank you for you, the author of marriages of King of Kings. You bring people together, and we know that you surely take them through all the different stages, and you hold them strong if they mm. lose. Father, we pray for the marriages that are struggling, Lord, that you would just restore them. May you soften their hearts, O King of Kings. May, may you uh, break the hearts of scorn, O God, and make them hearts mm. of flesh, O King of Kings. And Father, mm. Lord, may they look to you as the finisher of everything, O God, that you'll solve mm. their issues. May you bring people to surround them, O God, where they they are struggling, O King of Kings. And may, may, they, may the marriages, O God, of King of Kings, work out. We look to you and trust and believe that you work out everything, oh God, because we trust in you. We trust mm -hmm. that you will bring everything to accomplish. Because you, you started everything, you will surely work out their marriages, Lord. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Pastor M. Thank you for Pastor S. Thank you for mm -hmm. Pastor Carol. Thank you for the blessing that they are to the many mm -hmm. couples that they minister to, the many people that they, they look that look up to them, oh God. May you, oh God, continue using them to the glory and honor of your name. Be exalted and be lifted up in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Well, thank you so much, Moridis. Thank you so much, Hassans. Uh, we have enjoyed this conversation. Looking forward to next week. We're going to have different guests. We're going to be talking about uh, breaking dating relationships uh, when it's desirable to do that and when it's not, uh, when it's all about us, the mistakes we make around that, and also about divorce and separation. So we look forward to that discussion next week. Thank you, everyone. Have a good night and Thanks. really appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Thank Bless you. you. Bless you. Bye. 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 Good night. Good night.